Ignatius Loyola is one of the dominant Catholic reformers of the 1500s. He created this thing called the Society of Jesus, or more commonly known as the Jesuits, who reform Catholic theology into something particularly militaristic and practical. So the Jesuits uh, broke the mold of expectations that the Catholics had for themselves and surprised the Protestants with their zeal for the Catholic faith and with how they embodied that faith to those around them. The Jesuits were not afraid of hardship. So why were the Jesuits so militaristic? Well, Ignatius, from as a child, had always wanted to be a war hero, and he wanted to become a knight. And as a child, he's a page boy in the courts, um, and then, of course, he's training in his youth, and he goes to war. But, as Erie points out, it, being the Jesuits, all began with a cannonball and one hell of a wound. So, as I pointed out, Loyola had high ambitions for himself, but he goes to war, and a cannonball ricochets and hits him in the legs. And, of course, takes him out of the battle, and he's bedridden for a while, and as he's healing, he realizes that maybe this isn't for me. And so he turns away, the cannonball stops him from becoming a war hero. He's actually left with a limp for the rest of his life. The cannonball stops him from being a war hero, and so instead he turns to a life of religion, and over a period of years, he pushes into mysticism, and his religious experiences lead him to write this very famous book, The Spiritual Exercises, which lay out the practical manners of following Christ. So Erie points, out, points this out, quote, The title, The Spiritual Exercises, uh, says it all. These are exercises that, it, these are exercises um, that is the way of training one's will, of strengthening one's relationship with the divine, of straining to earn one's salvation, of gaining spiritual muscle, of improving and perfecting the self. Forget about a human will that can do nothing to earn its salvation or about justification by faith alone or grace alone. Forget about predestination, implicit or explicit. Forget about sinning boldly. The exercises are all about human initiative and human capacity to analyze and overcome personal weaknesses. God is part of the human process, yes, but the exercises are not as much about what God does for humans as, out, as what every Christian can do to reach out and grow ever closer to God. The exercises teach how to take charge of one's salvation, how to change and improve and aim for perfection. So, Ignatius Loyola's exercises are very practical. But, so, if you have the Protestants who emphasize justification by grace alone um, and, and emphasize no human interaction with their salvation whatsoever, that faith was completely a gift of God, well, the Jesuits are completely on the opposite side. The Catholics always believed in some, in some, to some respect, earning one's salvation, but Loyola takes it further and he says, just like a military man has to exercise and train in order to become the best soldier, so too should the soldiers of Christ train to become the best they can um, in the spirit. So that's why uh, he frames a lot of his exercises around this idea of training. In, in a very militaristic fashion. So you can see this in what he says, just as walking, just as taking a walk, traveling on foot and running are, spirit, are, are exercises, so is, the, is the, so is the same spiritual exercises given to any means of preparing and disposing our souls to rid itself of disordered conduct and then after finding God's will in the ordering of our life for the salvation of our souls. So basically, by that he's saying, if you walk, if you run, you're exercising your body. In the same way, there's ways of exercising the spirit to purify yourself and also draw closer to God. In other words, the human initiative is incredibly important. So he lays out 15 explanations of the spiritual exercises that um, the Jesuit would use to examine themselves, thoroughly as well as prostrate themselves before God in order to accomplish God's will. So did the Jesuits have any merit? Did they actually accomplish anything? So remember, just like a soldier is called to go anywhere and accomplish any goal and live in the harshest conditions in the same way the Society of Jesus acted like an army. If you're a Jesuit 
and and uh, they called you to go to any place, for example, the New World. At that time, you would go. That's what a soldier would do. So they penetrated the New World in order to bring the gospel anywhere they felt Jesus commanded them. Um, wherever they went, they also emphasized education and, of course, the spiritual exercises by which anyone could conquer and grow, um, not only themselves, but the world. So, again, you can clearly see uh, a fine through this, through a final quote from his book. So, this is called Principle and Foundations of the Exercises. So, he, this is what he points to. Human beings are created to praise, reverence, and serve God our Lord. And by means of doing this, save their souls. The other things on the face of the earth are created for the human beings to help them in the pursuit of the end for which they are created. From this it follows that we ought to use these things to the extent that they help us toward our end and free ourselves from them to the extent that they hinder us from it. To attain this, it is necessary to make ourselves indifferent to all created things in regard to everything which is left to our free will and is not forbidden. Consequently, in our own part, we ought not to seek health rather than sickness, wealth rather than poverty, honor rather than dishonor, a long life rather than a short one, and so all in all other matters. Rather, we ought to desire and choose only what that which is more conducive to the end for which we are created. So again, think of Loyola's Reformation as a strict embodiment of Catholic theology. Yes, the human works for their salvation. And yes, the world isn't necessarily evil. And of course, the human has free will. But all of those things enter into a spiritual exercise of purifying oneself and out of that, uh, bettering the world. The, the Jesuit, the soldier of Christ, doesn't shy away from hardship and rather they embrace it. And in doing and embracing hardship, the Jesuit knows that they are saving their own souls. 